almost three months into the June 3rd flood and fire disasters which claimed over 150 lives. The body of a male has been found in a burnt out building at the Goyal Filling Station in an advanced state of decomposition. So what really did the forensic team do at the site if they did not discover this body? Could there be more bodies still trapped there? How come no one reported this young man missing? Is it the case of a shoddy work by the agency's tax to clean up the disaster site and help identify victims? Can we really, under the circumstances, ascertain the number of people who lost their lives during the disaster? This is today's Big Story with me, Stephen Etty. Right, for many Ghanaians, the June 3rd disaster was behind us and perhaps all who lost their lives at the epicenter of the explosion had been retrieved and DNA is conducted and compensations paid to families. But that's actually not the case as today the body of a male in an advanced state of decomposition was found at the site. So our critical question tonight, how did this happen? We're getting onto the telephone lines now to speak to Dr. Kwesiening who is a security analyst. He joins us now by telephone. Uh, Dr. Aining, good evening, sir. Good evening, Dr. Aining. Right, uh, we don't have Dr. Aining on. If you've just joined us uh, today, a young a, a male, the body of a young male was discovered at the disaster site, uh, which, which was in an advanced state of decomposition. Our reporter, Kwete Nate, who went to the site, reports that residents who live around that area were, uh, were compelled by the stench emanating from the place to report to the Accra Metropolitan Authority, who then took a tax force there, and they discovered uh, a body uh, trapped in the rubble. So we're asking the question, how did this happen? Dr. Chris Henning is joining us. Uh, Dr. Henning, good evening, and we're grateful, as always, that you could join us. Well, good evening. I'm in the middle of dinner, so we have to do it as we start. Very dinner. fast. Okay, we're grateful. Competence should not disturb my dinner with my friends. That's I can imagine. So the key question everyone is asking is that how is it that a forensic team sweeps a disaster site and three months on after their work, a body is discovered at that same site? Well, Steve, if you remember, when I spoke to you about three months ago, I made a differentiation between the challenges posed by sudden onset disasters, like blast fires, um, and then slow onset disasters like drought, mm. things that we know about. Mm. Sudden on onset disasters have a way of challenging the standard approaches to recovery of you know uh, bodies and uh, property. Mm. Um, unfortunately, we seem to have lumped both approaches together. Together. And once more, you know, the effectiveness and quality of our of our public services have been exposed to mm. the whole of the world. And mm. this is most of, um, unfortunate. Most unfortunate. So there are many who would say, after all, it's just one body. But like you said, this has a lot of implications generally to how we conduct matters when it comes to disaster rescue and relief, etc. So who should be blamed for this lapse? Well, I think it, it, it shouldn't be a game anymore. You know, because the whole edifice of our public infrastructure that should protect and prevent and respond are all not working well. Mm. Nayeli passed through the president's VIP lounge. Nobody was prosecuted. Uh, the June third disaster came. We saw a supposedly madman wanting to kill the president. Mm. Nobody has been arrested. You know, there was a very shoddy trial. Uh, it gives me the impression that there's a certain indecent haste to put this man in prison and stop, you know, the investigations. And now this. I think as Ghanaians, we should pull back from the brink and stop the blame game and basically mm. ask ourselves, how can we ensure that the institutions that are supposed to deliver public services actually do deliver? And when they fail, that people can be punished. 
mm. serve as a deterrent to incompetence. So this, this shoddiness you, you speak about, I mean, two months on after the disaster, a body is found, and agencies who are responsible to uh, clean the sites and perhaps help in identification of people didn't do their work well. So who should be fingered? The, the, uh, the NADMO, National Disaster Management Organization, the Accra Metro, Metro, uh, Metropolitan Assembly, or who in particular? Well, certainly a combination of um, Banda Point, after, and then the disaster management organization, because they are the first uh, respondents. And I think they have failed, and they failed extremely woefully. And somebody must be giving us some answers to this. You see, this penchant in this country for tomorrow starting to abuse Christian and cursing him precisely because he's opening his mouth, it, it, it's not going to resolve the problem. Nadmo has failed, Okovanda Police Office has failed, the people of Accra. And they once more made this country a, a, a laughing stock. You see, because Accra was voted one of the cleanest cities or the best layer exactly. of something. Exactly. And this disaster happened right at the time when we were celebrating the city. And two months on, we have failed, and the hypocrisy around that time has been demonstrated once more that we couldn't even recover all the bodies. Exactly. It's pretty good. Look at the trauma it's for the family to wear. Involved. Exactly. It's pretty worrying, especially if the disaster site was not cleaned. I mean, I'm particularly concerned about the fact that a uh, disaster of this magnitude happens in the center of the city, Accra, Accra Central. And then. But it just uh, shows, you see, it just shows the ineffectiveness of those who manage the city. Mm. You see, if you remember, and if you just Google, when this disaster happened, two weeks on, residents were complaining of a foul stench, a rather uncomfortable stench. Mm. And there were some dismissiveness that, oh, no, we've done everything that we can do. There's nothing more left. But I also do know that there were people who were talking about loved ones that they couldn't find. That's exactly. Okay? And not just that. I mean, if you go back, just give me 30 seconds. This supposed fellow who has been arrested for having dropped a cigarette, mm. That lighted the fire. I think that's the wrong arrest. Mm. If that person dropped the cigarette, how come he was able to escape? And then he's married. I was here that time. Now, if I was smoking my cigarette, it's a public place. It's those who certify that goil or shell to be of standard protective or that the standard protective procedures have been put in place. Mm. Those are the people who should be arrested. Exactly. And when I spoke to you two months ago, I made this point. That man who smoked a cigarette, and it raises even more disturbing questions. <laughs> how, was he, how was he identified? Because if there's a film of fuel on the water, and you drop that uh, cigarette, the speed with which the flames will travel, basically beats my imagination that somebody has been actually singled out and has been arrested. So you, it raises you, critical questions. I think we need to be careful that we are not hasty in apportioning blame in situations where the evidence is mm, thin mm. and cannot stand in, in a court of competent uh, jurisdiction. So your view is that this young man, uh, Seth Kwesio Fosu, is being set as a scapegoat in this matter when actually thorough investigations should have been conducted to nail down the real source of this fire? I, I, I think it raises equally disturbing questions. Mm. And if you take a list or a hierarchy of the security blunders in this country in the last one year or so, starting with Nayeli, starting with this by a disaster, starting with this supposedly bad man attempting to assassinate the president, and now the arrest of this young man, it raises terrible concerns about the effectiveness of our investigation. Mm. Dr. Eni, before I let you go, I know you were in the middle of dinner, but uh, I always ask you for recommendations, what we can do to correct this, and sometimes I feel people don't listen. So. Under the circumstances where we bring forensic experts to do uh, supposed thorough work, which 
in my view, as a layman, uh, wasn't necessarily done well because otherwise they would have uh, found out this body trapped under the rubble. What should we no, be doing? Stephen, mm. you always ask me this question, and I always give you two, two answers. <laughs> One, that those who need to listen think I am a madman, mm. and so they won't listen to me. And secondly, that it is my consultant, so I won't share it freely. Right. <laughs> you know, so I will go back to my dinner. I'm having a very lovely Italian right. with break <laughs> <laughs> So I'll go back to drink a little bit more of those. Lovely red wine and enjoy my uh, <laughs> Dr. Eni, we're grateful for your time on today's big story. Thanks very much, uh, Dr. Christiani is a security analyst. So, uh, what we are discussing is is, is a quite an issue which uh, many people are questioning. We will be discussing the legal dimensions of uh, uh, citing this uh, single man as the cause of the fire. But our reporter, Kwete Nate, was at the site of the discovery uh, with a tax force which retrieved a decomposed body of this male. He's now joining us. Uh, uh, Ms. Mr. Kwete Nate, good evening. Uh, we're grateful. Good evening. So, uh, Kwete Nate, when you went there today, I mean, I reckon that uh, you've already, sorry, you've already reported to us that uh, residents were drawn to this stench, the stench at the place which led to the discovery of this body. But what else have they been saying? According to the residents, the site has been um, cordoned off for some time now. Mm. So what, what actually happened was that these residents who went to the building went, went there with the intention of, of, of salvaging some of their properties. I see. So when they went there, that, while they were, they were in the process of, of gathering some of their properties, that was when they discovered the decomposed body in the debris. Right. So, so uh, Kwetenate, I, we, I want to get it clear. I mean, after the discovery, were there any processes conducted to identify this dead person? When I spoke to the Nima Divisional Police Commander, he told me that the homicide unit of the Ghana Police Service are taking the body to the lab to okay. run tests on the body. He told me that they are not ruling out any. They are not ruling out foul play. Mm. So what they are going to do is they are going to conduct further investigations to explore the angles they need to, and they 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 they, they will take the issue forward. When when you say foul play, is it to suggest that there is the likelihood that this body might not have been uh, a victim of the fire explosion? and that possibly it was uh, an accidental death or something of the sort? When I spoke to the police commander, he, he didn't give me the indication that uh, the body probably might have been trapped uh, during the June 3rd disaster. Mm. Uh, he mm. told me that they want to look at all angles, all angles. whether mm. the body was part of the victims who were trapped over there, because the building appeared bent, it was pissed back, so the, 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 the conclusion that comes to mind is uh, the, the body might have been trapped during the disaster, but they, they want to take it forward by exploring other angles right. whether there was foul play in, 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 the, in, the, in the death of whoever was in there. Was in there. I before I let you go, I also know that the Director of Public Health uh, at the AMA was part of the team which went on this recovery. Did you get the chance to speak to him? I did. He told me that uh, when, when, when they came over to the scene, what they did was to fumigate the area. Mm. Um, uh, that, that was to avert any infections because because what, what the understanding he gave me was that um, residents had, had been there and there are chances others would probably go over there to take a look, to take a look at, to take a look at uh, what's in, in the debris there. Right. Uh, Kutinate, we're grateful for your time on today's Big Story. Kutinate is a Joy News uh, correspondent. Now, uh, you do know that uh, uh, a man 
Seth Kwesi Ofosu has been arrested for being the main cause of the June 3rd explosion. His offense is dropping a cigarette stub into the floating fuel. Legal experts are asking how about the owner of the filling station from where the fuel escaped? Does he bear no liability at all? Let's get on to the telephone line. Uh, lawyer Samsung Ladi Anyeneni, who is a private legal practitioner, is joining us on phone. Uh, Samsung, good evening, sir. Hi. Uh, this has come up again. I mean, I quite remember that uh, two months or so ago when uh, this happened, you discussed thoroughly the, 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 the issue of liability. Now, moving forward, the report, the, 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 the disaster report has singled out one person who is accused of dropping a cigarette stub, which started the fire. Um, it seems we're, we, have, we are yet to get past the June 3rd disaster. Do you say that way, in legal terms? Uh, the, the last bit of what you just said. Right. Uh, quickly, I mean, I just want to sum it up. I'm saying that you raised the legal issue of liability, and now, uh, moving forward, the disaster report is fingering just mm -hmm. one person, accusing him okay. of dropping a cigarette stub which spread the fire. Let me simplify my question. Is, right. this, is this reasonable? Um, to pursue one specific identifiable individual as the cause of the disaster is, is a possible route that it doesn't end there. You need to establish a number of factors. Mm. And when those factors are positively established, then you should be able to hold them liable, but liability not in criminality, but in, mm. in civil. I see. Which is to say that the person will be made to, to pay compensation. But the law naturally, um, the law actually is that when such a thing occurs, for as long as we are able to eliminate Hello, something. Right, I think we lost something. Ladia, and anyway, we'll try and raise him back on the line. If you've just joined us, we're just discussing the legal implications of singling out one man and accusing him of dropping a cigarette stub which started the fire, which uh, claimed about 150 lives. Security experts are questioning the, the, the thoroughness of the investigations that went on into uh, this disaster, and especially uh, seeing that Forensic experts were brought in to comb the area to, to, to clean up. And then yet, two months on, a body was found at that site. And it, it does appear that the owners of the filling station where the fuel escaped uh, safety to cause this fire are escaping liability, as it, it appears that uh, Seth Kwesiofosu is being held responsible for this uh, fire. Samson, we lost you on the telephone line, but you were giving us an analysis of the, the issues, dimensions of liability, whether the owners of the Goyle filling station have equal liability as this man who also dropped the cigarette stub and who we are unable to tell really whether he was of sane mind or not. Well, the, the starting point, really, is not whether the owners have equal liability, mm. but that they have a higher liability, mm. a rather higher liability. And I was starting off from the point that, uh, from the point of the law, which is the law of thought in civil action, mm. is that we have what we call the occupier's liability. Yeah. If you are the owner of a premises mm. and I come onto that premises and something unfortunate happens to me on that premises, for as long as the basis is that for as long as you, you, you gave me license to be on that premises so that if the place is a place of business activity mm. is the place as we are talking about now is a filling station i have been giving a sort of permission to 
to be on that property at any time to do business. Mm. So when I come onto the property and something bad happens to me, and that thing that happened to me is not traceable to the act, the act of God. When we say act of God, we, are, we mean that it is not a natural cause mm. which human intervention could not have foreseen and stopped. And some of these are floods, earthquakes, you know, and in certain situations, these are the, the, the primary, you know, uh, acts of God that we bring in. So when I come on there, and because I have, I, I come on there as a licensee in the in the legalese. I come there as a licensee because I have a right to be there mm. because you have invited me there to do business at that point, and you were expected to take certain steps to ensure that I I am safe when I come there. When I come there and I don't get that safety, and something happens to me you take that responsibility or right. liability mm. of compensating me in law. I see. So that mm. is the basic I, I need to state. That's right. Mm. But it ought to be clear that the, 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 the fuel that was, the petrol or fuel that was there underground, mm. if by its escape leading to the figure, uh, the figure dropping, you know, uh, uh, coming into conflict with it. If by its escape, it can be established that the, the owner ought to have done something which he did not do. do. Mm. And it is the reason for which that uh, flammable oil escapes. That is where he can be held Liable. liable but i mean that's the to case i mean mm. the people who suffer but that's the case something i mean we 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 have heard the report that there was a latch on the on the tanker which uh got broken or was not properly secured which left to which led to the process where the fuel escaped so in this instance, really, how far do you see this case going? I mean, Seth Kwesio Fosu and the owners of the Goya. What's likely to be the final outcome of this process that has started with the arrest of Mr. Fosu? Well, I, I mentioned this a lot earlier on mm. about uh, the victim looking at the possibility of uh, claiming and the owner being held liable mm. and compensating them accordingly earlier on and i was i was uh, I, I got a sort of a reprimand and, and a caution that it was too early in the day i see but if the report establishes positively without any challenge from the owner that there was a certain negligence on the part of the owner mm. that led to the the, the flammable uh, oil escaping and leading to the disaster, then without, you know, much to say again, I would say that we should probably look towards what compensation can be had mm. from the owner. From Unless the owner. Unless the owners uh, are able to establish uh, a, a stronger degree of an act of God, uh, or the flood, or the the quake that was happening mm. at the time also, that led to the break of their tank and allowed the escape of uh, the, the the fuel. Then uh, it is difficult to see a situation where they may not be held liable, liable by right. the mm. by the very uh, simple authority which this country we rely on. Yeah. Uh, in thought, it does appear that in that case, uh, the owner will have liability. And you see, right. mm. why it is the owners that are pursued in law often is mm. that there is an expectation that they would have insured the, uh, uh, the persons who are supposed to come to their place, mm. they would have supposed to have insured them against 
or indemnify them against, you know, such disasters. Mm. So that it is possible for them to rely on their insurers to assist in giving the compensation that is required. That is required. Something, uh, thank you very much. But quickly, before we make you go, this man who has been arrested, what charge is likely to be brought against him? Murder or an accomplice to murder or manslaughter? I am completely unaware. I do not want to get into uh, that uh, arena of speculation. That's and right. more importantly, because I do not see a thing of criminality in the circumstances. Right, uh, Samson, we're grateful for your time on uh, today's big story. Samson Ladi Anyanini is a private legal practitioner. We were earlier go going to uh, explore the public health dimensions of this and get onto the telephone lines. The Director of Public Health at the Accra Metropolitan Assembly, uh, Dr. Samson uh, Boating, but we didn't we didn't succeed in getting him onto the telephone lines, although he uh, agreed to join us. But we're grateful that he could join us on today's big story. And uh, this is where we draw the curtains. We'll be back with Joe News Interactive.